Well, thanks for joining us. This is Larry Paul with the American Institute of Pyramid Research, and we're going to look at some Giza pointings, some great pyramid pointings. Now, Matt Sibson runs a great channel, YouTube channel, Ancient Architects, and uh, his most recent video is The Face of the Great Sphinx, King Khufu. Now, if you've followed Ancient Architects over the years, they've done tremendous numbers of videos on the Sphinx, and, and they have shown tremendous knowledge about all the different issues related to the Sphinx. And to his credit, Mad Sibson, that runs the channel, has adjusted his view based on his research. He, he's changed his opinion on things over time. And so for him to come out and say in, in, the, in this world of where there's so much, you know, division about how old the Sphinx is and who built it and whose face it is, for him to say definitively, or at least give his, his reasoned opinion why it's King Khufu, that's pretty large. So let's, let's look at some of the things that led Matt to say this. Now, he goes through a series of... Uh, uh, teachings on this this program uh, middle kingdom pharaohs gave the sphinx the name horamaket okay so we do know it's been called horamaket and specifically thought most the fourth knew the sphinx as horamaket as a representative of the god ra harakti so he gave the sphinx a curly tip beard and that shows that thought most the fourth thought that the sphinx was a god so the new kingdom pharaohs called themselves sons of Ra Harakti. They're not equals. We're not saying, you know, he's one of us. So, so you know, he's God and we're his sons. We're not equal. Okay. New Kingdom pharaohs would not have carved their face on the Sphinx because it would have been sacrilegious. That's God. We're not going to take that place. So the name Har Har uh, Harakti dates back to the pyramid text from the 5th dynasty and the Old Kingdom. You know, basically the 3rd, 4th, and 5th dynasty. In the Old Kingdom, it was believed that the pharaoh would become Ra Harakti, rising on the eastern horizon after death. So that's what would have been the belief of Khufu. Thus, before the fifth dynasty, the time of the pyramid text, any face on the Sphinx must be a pharaoh before Horamakit became associated with Ra. All right, so that leads to the question, you know, which pharaoh's face was there? So ancient architects concludes that either Khufu or his son Jadefri ordered the likeness of Khufu to be placed on the face of the Sphinx. He thinks this is a stronger option than the other option probably would have been to say this is the face of Khafri, and some people say that. But ancient architect says it was probably Jadefri making the statue for Khufu. Now the inventory stella of the 26th dynasty says that Khufu restored the Sphinx. And some pretty powerful researchers, uh, Manu uh, Sevzada and Robert Schock, uh, wrote an article in which they said the inventory stella is more true than false because some people say that the inventory stella is misleading it's not true but you know there's some pretty solid evidence that 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 the 26th dynasty was retelling you know a story that was you know much more ancient than that and that Khufu restored the sphinx so there's some evidence to go along with ancient architects opinion that Khufu is on the face of the sphinx because he restored it. And, you know, if you're the one restoring it, well, then, you know, you're probably going to take some pride of place there. Okay. So the Sphinx is a statue of a king looking east to the place where he will re be reborn as Ra Harakti, because that's what the belief was. He would be reborn in the east. So now, if Khufu puts his picture, his, it carves his, his face into the face of, of uh, the Sphinx, then when people come to the Great Pyramid, which obviously people still do, I'm going there next week. If you want to come with me, <laughs> last minute, give me a shout if you watch this. And so the, they would see the Sphinx looking east, knowing, well, that was Khufu when he was alive, knowing that he was going to rise. And now, of course, we believe he's God. That's what that would be saying. So when uh, Simpson put this video out here, I said to him, this is, uh, I just took a snapshot of the, of the comments below the video. I said, Matt, I discovered a stone on the north side of the Great Pyramid that points directly to the head of the Sphinx. Well, if Khafri built the Sphinx, either Khufu's people knew the total Giza plan, because remember, Khafri wasn't built yet, and so the Pyramid of Khafri would come later, or this block was pointing to Khufu's statue. Write me if you'd like to see it. And he said, well, I'd love to see it. Wow. Because these stones, uh, on, and so I sent Matt this picture, and I said, you know, I'll give an explanation. I'm working on a video, and that's the video th that you're watching right now. Now, this is the block that's so differently pointed than the others. Now, all the researchers, you know, uh, current ones, Mark Lehner, you know, the, uh, the other ones, you know, that, that, are, that are famous researchers from the past, August Mar Marietta, whoever you want to mention, 
Uh, they say that the, this is the original, you know, pavement there. So this, this pavement that's east of Giza, this stone, which is at such an odd angle, why is that stone placed at that angle? That's what I wondered when I went by it. And so I, I started measuring it. You know, I just thought, well, I'll just measure. Let's see, you know, what happens. And so there's another view of it, and you can see it's pointing, and it seems to maybe even those stones that are set up next to the Great Pyramid there are trying to help you see that's where it's pointing. Okay, so... Before you start thinking, well, who in the heck would believe that, you know, that there are lines on Giza pointing to anything? Well, Matt Simpson doesn't normally do this kind of thing, but one of his videos, uh, he showed that these boxes, which are around the Sphinx, which you can see in red on the screen there, that when you start connecting those, they, they lead to all kind of amazing alignments. These are pointers. They were meant to be pointers. So look at these. Just connecting the boxes. You, you go from uh, the, the Khafre Valley Temple to the corner of Khufu. And then, you know, uh, just you can see the amazing alignments all around the Great Pyramid there. And so here's some more. It goes through the wall of the crow, goes through those Sphinx pointer boxes, and it points directly to, to Khufu's Pyramid. Unbelievable alignments. So Mad Simpson, uh, ancient architects, normally not doing this type of video, which is somewhat esoteric maybe, he found, well, it's there. Pointers are really true. And so, uh, and, and he said probably because of those pointings, there were probably obelisks or something on those boxes around the Sphinx because that's what they seem to be, like a, a you know, a, a holder for a, an obelisk. That could be very likely what it looked like. So the work that I do at the American Institute of Pyramid Research, again, I'm heading there next week on, on an uh, exploration trip as I do from time to time, uh, we've done a lot of work with the pointer. So when I first, uh, you know, saw this angle block, I did a rough sketch here. And then, of course, you take it to the real drawing board. You go to Google Earth, you use your electronic tools. And so uh, that's what I did. And so, uh, j and showing another example here. So what I call Littlefoot, that's another marker. The, the, mark the marker, the blue marker to the right is the, the north side Sphinx pointer marker. But the other one, I'm just showing you that, I call it little foot because it looks like a little foot. Well, it points down to Luxor. I mean, that's unbelievable that I just have to measure this thing and then, you know, look where Luxor is. I mean, that's not, you know, by chance, you don't have something pointing there. And so uh, the same kind of thinking led me to, to follow this uh, great pyramid pointer that's on the north side. And, uh, you know, it points right to the Sphinx. Here are some other markings. These are on the east side of the great pyramid. So I saw these, and I, I passed these many times, you know, just studying the Giza Plateau, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start measuring these and see what they lead to. Well, it ended up, uh, you know, as I measured them, uh, the angles and whatnot, I made a major, major presentation at a large Egyptological conference. I'm not an Egyptologist, but the articles were peer-reviewed, so I, you know, put it together, and it was accepted. And so to an audience of Egyptologists, I presented the evidence of these markings. So... You can see there uh, from the, where the blue and green lines radiate, that's where those five pointers were. And they point amazingly to places that are of significance inside the Great Pyramid and elsewhere. So this is uh, some of the, what I found. So marker number two pointed to the end of the dead end passage, the very end of the passage system in the Great Pyramid up in the subterranean chamber. But there was another part of that pointer that pointed to the uh, southwest corner of the Great Pyramid, almost like a benchmark. And then when I took another marker, same thing. This was marker number one. It pointed specifically to the Queen's Chamber, but then it had another pointer that pointed to that southwest corner, again, sort of saying that's like a checkpoint. And I thought, this is amazing from these markings that it, they're, they're such accurate pointings. So this is the place of those five markings right there. There's a top view of the Great Pyramid. That's the east side by the boat pit, and you can see where those five markings were. So uh, here's, here I just lined up the two boat pits, and they point exactly to the, uh, the southwest Eris angle in the Great Pyramid. And when you make a square from where that spot is, it goes exactly to where the notch is on the northeast side. So this forms a, a, a theoretical square that I, I've called the Hemiunu template and have done a lot of work with it. It's amazing. And that started from these pointers, these boat pit pointers that, that led me to find that. Uh, just looking again at uh, these five pointers that, uh, here, the, the one that's not pointing toward the Great Pyramid over there, that was from the fifth marking, and it points through the Sphinx. And I first saw that, I thought, well, it's through the middle of the Sphinx. It's not the head. I wonder if it goes on. And I just continued the line, and it goes down to the Giza Fibonacci origin. Unbelievable. So here's a, a, a sketch of the, the Fibonacci origin now. 
the, 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 this Fibonacci spiral, so if you know the Fibonacci numbers, they're amazing, you know, math, an amazing mathematical set of numbers. They create these spirals based on the phi proportion. And this spiral goes through exactly the center of the three Giza giant pyramids. Now, that cannot be by chance. If you draw three dots on a piece of paper and put a line through them, the chances are heavily, heavily, heavily against you that a, a Fibonacci spiral will go through the three of them. A Fibonacci spiral is not a circle. It's a very specialized curve. And so when you go back to where the origin is right there, that sort of symbolizes eternity because you can still you can the, the, you can keep winding, winding in like forever, just like the other end of the Fibonacci spiral goes on forever. So in a sense, this Fibonacci spiral is a symbol of eternity. So here's this block, this fifth uh, uh, mark on the Great Pyramid that's pointing to the origin of the Fibonacci spiral. And then when you take, if you use the, the Sphinx and put a line directly through it north-south where it touches the Fibonacci spiral top and bottom. And then you do the same thing across the Sphinx, east and west, the border, the two sides of that Fibonacci spiral, it forms a golden cross. You divide the length by the width and through the center of the Sphinx, that cross is at the phi proportion. These things can't be by chance. Giza is the result of planned architecture. There's, to me, there's no other conclusion that you can draw. So here's the main point. From, from this video. That mark, there's a close-up there. Uh, the, the right of the two blue marks is where I found that pointed block. And I said, hey, Matt, this points to the Sphinx. It does. It points directly to the head of the Sphinx. These, mar these blocks were put there at the time the Great Pyramid was built. All the archaeologists agree on that. Is it just random chance? You know, could you go and measure all the blocks on the north side? You know, I don't think th these ones were singularly positioned. And the fact that this points to the Sphinx, if you take what Egyptologists say, the Sphinx wasn't built yet because it wasn't built until Khafre built his pyramid and that pyramid wasn't there yet. And so how could they have placed a block on the north side of the the Great Pyramid that would point to where the Sphinx would be, except if it was already there or except if they were saying, you know, Khufu's building this. So I think uh, Ancient Architects is on the right track, uh, and I've got more to say about this in another video relating to the Khufu Valley Temple. Well, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, comment below. Thanks so much.